how to play the Jimi Hendrix chord, and a complete practice routine. One, two, three. <laughs> Welcome back to Swift Lessons for another blues rock guitar tutorial. In today's session, we're gonna be studying the playing technique and also the theory behind the dominant seven, sharp nine, no five chord, better known as the Hendrix chord. Now, once you feel like you have this advanced shape down, we're gonna work it into a complete practice routine and you can follow along using my tablature at patreon.com slash swiftlessons where I'm gonna have a complete PDF study guide for you. Now, let's get started. Okay, a close look at the fretboard, getting started with section one of this lesson, technique and theory. So the Hendrix chord, also known as the dominant seven, sharp nine, no five chord, that's its ultra technical name, is a harmony of the first, the major third, the flat or dominant seven, and the sharp nine. Now this note right here can also be thought of as a minor third. So this is a chord that contains both major and minor tonalities, and that's what's gonna give it this intensely dissonant character. All right, that is the Hendrix chord in the key of E, but keep in mind, this is a completely movable shape because there aren't any open strings in this chord. So you just learned how to play the Hendrix chord in every single key. Now, if you compare this chord with the major scale in the key of E, you're really gonna understand how these intervals work. So that E major scale. If we take a look at that first note that we have in the chord. All right, we can see that's the root note or the tonic. Then we have the major third. Do, re, mi, one, two, three. All right, making the chord major. The next note that we have. Flat seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Flat it back. Now we have an E7 chord. All right, then that sharp nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sharp it up. All right, that's gonna give us that intense flavor there. Now again, that sharp nine. If I take it from the second octave and count up to three, I can also see why it's a flat at third. So the E note, one, two, three, right there, the minor third. Okay, so even though this chord contains both the major and the minor third, always keep in mind that it's really going to be used exclusively as a way of embellishing an E or an E7 major chord. Okay, so practice that chord nice and slow, build the muscle memory. You can start off putting one finger down at a time, take the fingers off, wiggle them around for a full reset, and then go right back to it. Now, if you're having some real problems, then I recommend holding the chord down and moving the fingers on and off the fretboard one at a time. That's a great way of developing the dexterity that you need. Now, if you need some more tips on how to learn advanced chords, I have a lesson on that subject. You can just click the card right up here. Okay, so, if you have this chord shape down, you're ready to apply it to a full practice routine. Okay, great work everybody. Now we're jumping into section two, a complete practice routine, where we're gonna be able to couple this dominant seven sharp nine chord with some very cool and very useful riffs. And licks. Okay, so the full practice routine, real slow, it's gonna sound like this, a one, Two, three. Again, making use of the C position, 
of the E minor pentatonic scale. Okay, the first riff sounds like this. All right, so we're sliding up to the seventh fret of the low E string. A slight bend on five on the A. Back to seven. Back to five. And then the low E string open to start the next measure. So one, two, three. All right, next, we're gonna strum the Hendrix chord before striking the strings dead and setting up a very useful blues lick, one that I think I lifted off of Steve Ray Vaughan's Voodoo Child performance. Okay, so so far you have. All right, I'm gonna drive my palm into the strings and then the pick, making sure that I'm still dead fishing with my fret in hand. That's going to just block the strings, make sure that no sound is getting out. All right, from there, we're going to play the open high E string, then a hammer and pull trick. All right, second fret of the G string, hammering up to the third, pulling off back down to two, and then pulling off to the open G string before going to the second fret of the D string. Now it sounds great if you can let that high E string ring out. I'm gonna pull it with my middle finger, hybrid picking. So those notes are kind of cascading against each other. All right, practice that real slow. You add it into the mix and we have. All right, then measure three, we're gonna play. Last low E string is going to be the next measure in the next line of tablature. Okay, so the low E string open, followed by a strum of the Hendrix chord. Then real quick, two power chords, G5 going up to A5. So the first one, third fret low E string, fifth fret A, fifth fret D, bring it up a whole step, strum it once more. And what I like to do is slide away from that A chord before playing the low E string open and starting my next line of tablature. Okay, so you put all of line one together and we have a one, two, three. Okay, now taking a look at line two, you can see that we're just going to repeat measures two and three. So. power chord. All right, all we have left from here is a nice closing lick. All right, a great way to end a blues or rock song. So this is completely free time. You can play it with the rhythm that you like, but just to give you a kind of general idea, I'm playing the low E string open. Then we have this first little lick. So that was the high E string 3O, O3 on the B, and then the open high E string again. You can always add in a little bit of a break. Just to make it sound a little bit more aggressive. All right, then we have that hammer on pull off trick again. Just like we played before, two, three, two, zero, two. All right, from there, we're just gonna walk down. The blues scale, D string two, zero. Two on the A string. A pull off, one to zero on the A. Then. Three on the low E string, up to four followed by the open low E string. Put that together and we have. From there, we're gonna strum once more the Hendrix chord to close up shop. 
You put all that together and we have one, two, three. <laughs> Alright friends, thanks so much for checking out this blues rock guitar tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash with lessons. Hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. And thanks to you guys, I got many more lessons coming up, so keep checking in. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.